All right, we are going to do a dashboard with a dynamic uh, search. And what I mean by a dynamic search, I mean a, a search box that we can just type in and see the results change as we go. Um, all right, first we're going to just make a BAQ. This is not going to be anything complicated. We're just going to grab... part table, grab part number and description. All right, so I should share that. All right, and then we're going to make a dashboard. Um, so since we're going to be uh, the dynamic search, we're actually going to be bringing all the results back into locally and then filtering them locally. So might as well do an auto refresh on that. Obviously, if you've got 200,000 parts, this isn't going to work, but this will work here. Um, so I'm going to make that, and then I'm going to add a new uh, tracker. I don't actually want anything visible. I just want this as a place that I can add a customization to later. Um, I'm going to deploy this. All right. So now if I restart up a core, I should have a favorite. I should have a menu item there. Okay. So we're going to go into developer mode. This is the dashboard that I just created. All right. And we're going to customize this. doing. All right. here, but okay, so I've got a text box with a description. Uh, save this. So now we can use some wizards here. Um, we can use our event wizard. Look for our text box, see if it picked up the new name. It did. We're going to do a event on text changed. So anytime the text in our text box changed, we're going to fire this event. All right, so in here, we need to, we're going to modify the, the row filter on our data view directly. So if we go into our object explorer, we can see our data views. So we've got our data objects, and we see our every data views. Now, this view is going to change dependent on a lot of things. Um, if you had a different BAQ name, if you added the BAQ, if you added the grid mul multiple times, this can change. So 
Um, but we still get an idea of what our syntax should be. So I'm actually just going to copy this piece out. And this is going to be uh, what this is our, um, our parts epi data view. syntax for the filter here um, we're gonna this you can just Google and that'd be a, a data view row filter is what I'm going to use on this but we need our column name which we can see our column name back here that is part underscore part description this is actually the column name that we're going to be filtering on And this is equal to, and we're going to do a, that is a wild card. And another percent for a wild card. All right, so what we're doing is we're setting this string to part description is equal to, then this is just replacing uh, that with our the text in our description there. So now I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna grab our Let's see if I got that right. All right. So we're just going to take our epi data view, grab, look at the, grab the data view out of it, and set the row filter to this. So each time the text changes, we're going to redo the filter on it. All right. So let's give this a try. So I should be able to start typing in there, and it did not work. What did I do wrong? All right, you notice uh, in my code here, I put an equals there. That's not supposed to be an equals. That's supposed to be a like. Um, so we were just trying to set it equals, uh, and there was, yeah, I don't know what I'll do with it wild cars with an equal. So change that equals to a like um, and try this again here. All right, so now we've got that and now it is doing what we are expecting. You can see that it starts filtering down. We can do a C1. All right, there we go. Uh, 